Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to show you how to fix a failed epoxy floor install and I'm going to talk about what I think happened coming up next. So one of the issues I can see is the seams weren't filled right. They were probably just scraped tight. You want to overfill them. That way you can sand them completely flush and then you don't have any low spots on your seams. The second thing I can see happen, they have uh, divots all over the floor that didn't fill in and level out. Um, usually this happens when the resin is too thin in spots or too much uh, dispersing effects were applied onto the floor. So these random little holes, craters, are all over the floor. Another issue this can be is from the resin setting up too quick and then you disperse it. It disperses that resin in a thin spot and then it's already setting up and getting thick so it doesn't level back out. The third issue that I can tell happened was too much dispersing effects or denatured alcohol or, or some type of chemical was sprayed on the surface and that's why all of these veins are muddied out. I can tell they rolled across them with the roller with the vein because you can see the roller lines but the fact that the veins spread out sideways tells me that there was too much chemicals or something was sprayed on this floor that kind of muddied out those veins. The fourth thing that I can see is when they rolled the veins, they didn't blend in at all. You can see roller lines and everything kind of everywhere that it was hit. And so that tells me the resin was setting up already. It was getting thick. Um, and so it didn't want to marbleize and move around like it typically would um, before it starts to set up and get sticky. So those are the things that I can just tell by walking in here. Some of the prep wasn't done correctly. Maybe some thin spots were put on the floor. Probably took a little too long to spread the products out. And also too much chemicals were sprayed on the floor and kind of muddied out all the colors. And so we're gonna show you guys what we would do coming in to fix this. Now, the first thing that they did, sanded the entire floor, scuffed it up really good, 100 grit sanding screens, cleaned it, vacuumed it, mopped it. So it's basically ready to coat again. One thing I will point out is if you have a lot of dark colors, um, and you're not sure if your, your next coat of epoxy is gonna cover those colors, you probably should reprime that surface. I know our, our white epoxy covers extremely well, so I'm not worried about repriming this, but if you guys um, aren't, aren't sure, or you wanna make sure, right? Last thing you wanna do is recoat the floor and you can see random spots kind of through um, that next coat where the previous veins were, okay? So we're gonna coat this, it's ready to go, it's sanded. Um, we're not gonna prime it, but again, it's always best to prime surfaces if you are unsure. That way you have a nice clean canvas to go over. And then we're basically gonna do the same thing. We're not doing gold in this floor. I talked with them, I said, hey, resale value, probably better off not doing gold. Just do the white and black, because um, you never know when you're gonna sell your house and you don't wanna do something kind of out of the box that maybe most people that were potentially would buy your house would deter them from buying your house. So again, we're just doing white, black highlights, no gold. Uh, highlights in this floor. This is first day on the job, guys. <laughs> All right, so mixing simple. We have a simple process for mixing to ensure no soft spots. The resin's thoroughly mixed. You're, not, you're never gonna have issues on your projects from the resin not setting up or being soft for a month or two, right? So we call it 3P2. Kyle's gonna start at the top of the bucket. He's gonna go in the middle all the way down with the drill. Once he hits the bottom, he's gonna go around the bottom a couple times. He's gonna come back up slow, go around the top a couple times. That stands for one. He's gonna do that three times. And then he's gonna pour into the secondary mixing container that they've labeled with tape so they know this is a secondary mixing container. He'll pour all the resin into here, scrape out the sides, get as much out of there as he can. And then he's just gonna go up and down two more times. Very simple, it's very fast. Okay, before we dump it out, I wanna talk about the tools. I got a 3 8 snap roller. It's been de-shedded, 18 inch. We got our flat Ligari squeegee for blending in the highlights. And then we got a really cool tool, our not squeegee. That's gonna spread the product down at exactly 45 square foot a gallon. You guys are gonna see how fast I can spread a base coat down using this tool right here. And as long as you're using our not squeegee, you don't have to be really precise with pouring the beads out. Because again, we're just moving this around until the whole floor is coated and we know it's exactly 45 square foot a gallon. Right 
right? We got this imaginary line. This is our first section. So I need to spread this out until we're, this first section is coated. Okay, so we got our we got our base coat spread out, not squeegee. We rolled it really quick. Again, that's gonna help level it out even better. It's gonna get rid of any, any air that was trapped in there from the not squeegee lines. And now we're ready for highlights. So again, I'm gonna do small amounts of highlights because the black is pretty powerful. It's gonna blend a lot better than these did. And so I'm gonna go sporadically throughout the floor, different directions as I do it. Easiest way is to dip a paint stick and let it drizzle off that paint stick. Before we add the highlights in our first section, I want you guys to comment below, if this was your house, what top coat would you choose? Matte urethane or gloss urethane? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so blending them is easy. We're just trying to blend the surface. We're not trying to move the product around a lot. We don't want to pull a bunch of product and wind up with big puddles everywhere, right? So I'm just going to be real random, hold it at a low angle, and we're just going to start blending it around different directions, just like that. Okay, once we're happy with the design, everything's blended like we like. If there's any spots you don't like, you can always blend those colors more. Biggest thing is making sure there's no thin spots where the squeegee pulled too much, missed spots, right? So get different angles, check that. So now we're gonna sp spritz it with isopropyl alcohol, 91% or higher. That's gonna create some cool cells and dispersing effects in the surface, but we don't wanna flood the surface, right? Small to medium drops. They're mixing up that next batch by the time I'm done. They're gonna come in, pour that next batch out. Now we have a fresh batch of resin, right? If we tried to pour this whole floor, come back and do highlights, it's gonna start setting up, it's not gonna work out. And that's why you split your projects up into sections so you always have fresh fluid product.
We're gonna finish this last section out. Again, everything's the same as that first section, so we've continued the same steps. Spread your base coat with the notch squeegee. Roll it really quick, 3 8 snap roller. Do your highlights, blend those in with the squeegee. Uh, disperse it with isopropyl alcohol, and then let that evaporate for about 10 minutes. Mist the floor with denatured alcohol if you see any bubbles out there. Um, and that's kind of the process through this whole project. So you can clean the squeegees off, denatured alcohol, and a rag. So they're gonna start cleaning tools up. Um, we like to just let everything set up, come back the next day, because you're usually top coating, and then throw them in garbage bags. That way we're not dealing with sticky fluid epoxy and a bunch of garbage bags that could potentially leak out and make a mess. That's it. See you guys on the next project. We'll throw some final footage and shots of this project when it's all completed so you guys can see that. We'll see you next time.